Hello and welcome to this interview with Adam Godfrey, who is the Sales and Marketing Director of Flybom and they're a leading ServiceNow consultancy. You're the first lead partner in the UK? Um, well, we, we progressed through the tiers of partnership faster. So there's, there's a number of elite partners, but they tend to be big global organisations. Uh, so what was unique about our journey was the speed that we went from being uh, from the lowest tier to the highest tier, basically. And uh, so you've been with Flyform a couple of years now, and obviously the last couple of months have been quite transformative in every way possible. What are the biggest changes that you've seen in your customer base? Um, just so much change everywhere, but with customers specifically, um, you know, they definitely adopted uh, the remote workshops, you know, quite quickly and easily. Uh, and we were worried about the impact it would have. Um, in software development, a large part of the project's always been done remotely because you don't need to be there to be creating stories and doing testing. But we really valued, and so did our customers, the initial uh, workshop phase of a project, which can be anywhere from two to four weeks. Um, and during that time, you know, you, you really build relationships with the customers and understand the stakeholders and the business requirements in more detail beyond what you get in written requirements. So um, that was a big change. And um, but it's a change everyone's been through and everyone's so much more comfortable using Zoom now uh, yeah. that it flows a lot more naturally. And both our teams and the customers seem to have uh, adopted it really well. And you, man uh, you mentioned the managing the uh, the process in the project work remotely, but you have to now manage your team as well remotely. What are the, some of the leadership skills that you found the most useful during this time? Um, I'm not sure I can take too much credit. It's more that the, you know, the, the, the individuals around me are stars. Um, and, and because of the way we were working, um, although we did see each other a few times a week, you know, uh, as a sales team, we are um, often on the road, on trains, you know, up and down the country all the time. So being able to check in daily, being able to understand the priorities, uh, when they shift, um, what's occurring, uh, being able to deal with any escalations and support each other has always been a, a, an integral part of the job. Um, and the team that I've got are fantastic at that. So although there's been a massive change to you know, how we work, you know, we've all been done remotely, those core um, foundations that we had in place in terms of how we communicate um, have been fine and they've served us fine through the you know through the covid crisis i guess it's a communication between the teams and the people as well as the different tools that you use as well you mentioned um zoom but you probably use other collaboration tools as well um to get the communication. yeah i think um slack came into our business about a year ago and uh and we live on it you know as yeah. with many organizations so uh yeah. we have a channel for each customer you know we're able to put the the updates and the progress and um it really does keep not just sales in sync with each other but it really brings delivery and operations into into our world so they can see what we're doing in all that work in the early part of the sales cycle they see that you know po's don't just land and, and projects don't just appear you know that there can be weeks or months worth of work to get there uh, and by giving them transparency and visibility on that they feel that they're on the journey with us. They get to know the customer and why we've structured it in a particular way. Uh, and it does very much gel us together as one organization so that we don't feel uh, a sales delivery divide, which is amazing. Yeah, that, that sounds very good. And, and some of those changes that you've had to make during this time, um, what are some of those changes that you think you might use uh, kind of post pandemic, um, say remote workshops, or do you see that? Um, some of those other aspects of communication have really helped so that you see that actually this is really good we'll use this afterwards as well. I'd be keen to get back to running physical workshops when when the world uh, allows it because um, I do miss and I know my team do miss that face-to-face -face interaction. Um, it is more efficient as well you know the way we got around it and the structure we put in place and the tools that we use are successful but maybe it takes 10 hours to do eight hours worth of work, for example. Um, so I think we'd be keen to return to that as quickly as possible. In terms of what we'd keep, um, a lot has changed about the sales cycle itself. You know, customers go into more depth, uh, more workshops required, more mm -hmm. demos, more customer, you know, more configuration to show a customer something. Um, that's been a big adjustment and it's been quite um, labor intensive. 
Mm. But there's definitely a lot we've learned there that's both, you know, we can do in complex sales cycles moving forward, but we can efficiently reuse as well. So I'd like to think that the extra work we put into the sales cycles over the last few months have, have given us a lot of reusable material and a lot of insight in how to, we can help customers more successfully moving forward. Yeah, I guess when customers can't have the face-to-face -face, uh, conversation and building a rapport that way and building trust, they probably then ask for more information online or over demos and so forth. Very uh, much so. Like, I found, you know, there was a few questions that I was thinking, if, if I was in the room with these guys, we'd jump on the whiteboard and literally draw it out in front of them and we'd probably tick that concern off in their head there and then. But because you can't do that, and, and no amount of technology is you can't just whiteboard, like, though you can whiteboard on Teams and, and uh, Zoom, etc. Just not the same as being sitting there, looking in their eyes, explaining to them, getting their feedback, understanding if you're on the right track. So, you know, the way we work around that, we have to go off and build something, you know, and that does take a couple of extra days and it's a bit more intensive. But then the ticks the box for the customer. The customer says, right, we're not just talking about it theoretically here. I've been able to see it in action. Um, and it gives them comfort in making the choice and decision moving forward. Yeah, and going a little bit deeper on, on the changes between COVID, we've all had a great opportunity as well to spend time with families, not necessarily friends, because we don't often live with friends, but are, are there some, have you had any moments of kind of, oh, this is who I really am, or this is what I was meant to do? A huge change for me. So not just me, but my team were, were proper road warriors and, in, in, you know, as many salespeople are. Uh, for myself, that was, I live in um, Derbyshire. Uh, I was in London on Monday, Tuesday and Cardiff, where I, uh, HQ is, um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I saw my family on weekends. Um, I don't want to go back to that. <laughs> um, you know, I like being at home and reading uh, the Harry Potter books to my son every night. I like um, playing Fortnite with my kids. I like having meals with my wife. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how I got into that routine, but it's not a routine I want to get back into. I very much value the uh, things I've learned from, from working at home and the value, you know, the, the family time and couples time and stuff. So yeah, definitely whatever happens moving forwards, I need to make sure those things are more protected and um, that's the balance that I, that I want. Thanks. And, um, and taking um, that a bit further, I, I guess um, you already said you, you, you're working for Flyform and I know Flyform's a great company to work for and work with. And um, those family values are really something that you hold dear as a company. But what other factors do you think, or is that really the factor that matters going forward? What are those companies you think will thrive in the future? I think um, the crisis has probably tested a lot of companies' values. Where I'm particularly proud that Flyform have performed well is prior to this, our strategy was um, known as 2020 Healthy. Um, and, you know, we as a senior management team formed this at the start of the year before COVID kicked off. And it was really to spend 2020 focusing on the business process and systems and all the foundations so that we could scale and continue to grow the way, the way we wish to. Um, but also having healthy staff, um, understanding the feedback that they give us, acting on it quickly, um, making sure that we were making continual and gradual improvements and healthy customer relationships, making sure that you know, we weren't making the same mistakes of the global system integrators and, and neglecting our customers or, or not meeting our promises or dropping our level of quality and output. So 2020 Health is something we launched before and it's something that when the crisis came, we had to just double down on it. It was the most important thing, you know, being able to make assurances to our staff and make sure that they felt financially secure and job secure um, regardless of what happened to, you know, changes in pipeline and delays in projects, et cetera, you know, it really took a big um, weight off a lot of people's mind, you know, to make sure that they knew that their pay wasn't going to reduce regardless of what circumstances that um, actually the team, the Flyform family that we talk about and cherish is more important than what our EBIT is this month or quarter. Um, you know, that tests a lot of companies. I've seen a lot of companies pretty ruthlessly, making redundancies and um, all sorts of changes or paying furlough and not topping up and you know various things that I d we don't necessarily agree with you know we've really stood to our values we've um, 
promoted people during uh, COVID, people that have stepped up, people that have, um, you know, developed their skills, people that have got great feedback from customers. We've given people pay rises. You know, we've really supported the, the team around us, and I think that's always the right thing to do. The test is, you know, as we scale beyond 50 people to, you know, 200 people, 500 people, 1,000 people, is that's the most important thing we've got to get right. If we get that right, we'll continue delivering the highest CSAT projects and being, you know, customers' first choice and service accounts' first choice. Uh, so our full focus is on our culture and our, our employees. Everything else follows and flows down from that. Well, thank you very much, Adam. That was really inspiring. And um, I, I don't think there is a, another message you want to share necessarily with other sales directors out there, um, apart from being inspiration, but you say anything else you want to say. Uh, no, I, I've enjoyed actually one thing through this crisis is um, through ServiceNow, the community, is we started talking to our peers a lot more and ServiceNow facilitated that. Uh, and we have a weekly Zoom call with kind of 50 odd people, you know, various execs and people from ServiceNow, but our competitors, you know, people in the same role as me, you know, other, um, the other owners, other shareholders, etc. And I've really enjoyed that, actually. And um, you realize that you're, you're all in a similar boat and we've been able to quite enjoy sharing insight and information and tips and advice and guidance. So um, I think it's definitely brought the community together, not just uh, our company and our brand, but, you know, we've got closer ties with both ServiceNow and uh, the people in our marketplace now than we had before. Oh, that's, that's lovely. Yeah, collaboration is always the best way forward. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Adam. Hi, Rose. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. You too.